Let's do these three examples of finding the area of the shaded region of a normal distribution. In these examples, the graph depicts the standard normal distribution of bone density scores with mean zero and standard deviation one. In each example, we'll find the area of the shaded region using a standard z-score table and using a calculator. In this first example, we're looking for the area under the standard normal curve that is less than 0.44 standard deviations away from the mean, which is denoted like this in probability notation. Recall that on a z-score table, it is these left tails that are given to us. If we look up a z-score of 0.44 in the table, exactly what we will get is this area to the left of 0.44 that we're looking for. So let's begin by looking at the table. Consulting the half of the table with positive z-scores, we see that a score of 0.4 4 gives a probability of about 0.67. So the area of this shaded region is 0.67. So calculating these left tail probabilities is very straightforward. If we wanted to do it on a calculator, we would have to access our distributions by pressing second vars, then go to the normal CDF, and then our lower bound, in theory, we want to be negative infinity. But if you don't have negative infinity, then just a negative really big number will do fine. Our upper bound is the z-score we're going up to, which is 0.44. And since this is a standard normal curve, mean zero, standard deviation one, we don't have to input anything else. We're done, just press enter, and the calculator gives us 0.67. This second example is very similar, except we're looking at a right tail. We want to know the area under the normal curve that is greater than negative 1.04 standard deviations away from the mean. To begin, we'll use the table. But what z-score should we look for in the table? Well, remember, the normal distribution is symmetric. Right now, we want to know what area is above negative 1.04. Well, since the normal curve is symmetric, that's the same as the area that's below positive 1.04. So if we just look up positive 1.04, that will give us a left tail, which will be congruent to the right tail, and that will be our answer. And positive 1.04 gives us a probability of 0.8508. So that's the area to the left of 1.04, which is the same as the area that's to the right of negative 1.04. And again, that probability was 0 0.8508. Now let's do it on a calculator. On the calculator, we don't have to use any properties of symmetry. Again, we'll just press second vars to access our distributions, choose the normal CDF. In this case, our lower bound is that lower z-score of negative 1.04. So we put in negative 1.04, and our upper bound in theory is infinity. If you don't have an infinity button, just use a really big positive number. And we get 0 0.85083, as expected. In this final example, we need to find the area between two z-scores. To do this, we need to look up the area that's to the left of the upper z-score, 1.28. That will give us all of this. Then we need to look up the area that's to the left of the lower z-score, negative 0.84. That will give us all of this. And if we take that lower area out of the bigger blue area, we'll be left with that area in the middle that we actually want. So again, we'll look up the bigger z-score to get this whole area, and then look up the lower z-score so that we can subtract that little tail that we don't want and be left with the area in between. Beginning with looking up 1.28, the area to the left of 1.28 appears to be 0.8997. So we'll write that up here, 0.8997. Then we need to subtract the lower tail. So let's look up negative 0.84. The area to the left of negative 0.84 is 0.2005. So we'll subtract 0.2005, and this gives us about 0 0.6992 as the area of that shaded region. On the calculator, this example
level is no harder than the others. We'll access our distributions, our lower bound, we want to be the lower z-score, which in this example was negative 0.84. The upper bound is the upper z-score of 1.28, and this gives us an area of 0.6992, which agrees with what we got from the table. So those are a few examples of how we can use a table or a calculator to find the areas of shaded regions under normal curves. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and thanks for watching.